series, Ray Charles Genius. I call you Mr. I shine your shoes. You go away laughing while I sing the blues. He was shrewd. He was very aware. But it didn't nothing get by Ray. He could hear around the corner, you know. <laughs> he didn't miss anything. I did, of course, watch him deal with a lot of people. Uh, having the opportunity to be in his presence when deals are being made and then the, the uh, process after, before. Uh, just, you know, picking up on the questions, the right questions, the benefits, how it's going to benefit the world and what he has set out and aspired to do all of his life, which is to make music and make good music. Uh, so all of those things came into effect, just, just how he treated people, among other things. He was just a fair person, you know, just, just the whole aspect of from beginning to end, how he handled situations. One of the things about Ray's personality was that he was so charming. You know, Ray was a, 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 a blind teenager whose entire immediate family had died by the time he was 17, and he wanted to navigate this world. And if you're going to do that without a set of eyes, you better learn how to charm people into getting them to do things for you. And Ray took that same thought process and discipline to his business, always thinking six or seven steps ahead. And then ultimately, when he was in his 30s and he learned how to play chess, he became a very good chess player by once again taking that same discipline. He was a hell of a chess player. And he had this special board where the, I forget the black or white, but one of them was receded a little bit. The squares were a little lower than the other, so he could feel the board. And, and the, the pieces fit in a little slot in the, in the thing, and he could, he could visualize the chessboard in his head. And now my brother played drums with Ray Charles for 18 years up until Ray passed. And, and they were real tight, and, and Pete played chess with him all the time. But I played with him once, and he whooped me. <laughs> He was generous for two reasons. Number one, his mother raised him to be a kind, generous person. But number two, he knew that he would always need people to, to help him and do his daily chores. So he was genesis, generous with his assistants, people that were helping him, but yet very frugal with himself. I'm sure Ray was asked how did he rise above his, what you want to call it, shortcomings, if you want to say. It isn't a shortcoming. We don't have, we create them for ourselves, but it's not a shortcoming. Mr. Charles took his childhood as a lesson, as a meant to be. He never dwelled on it. He loved his childhood, every aspect of his childhood. He loved it. He never used it as a tool. It was never a hindering. He took life as a lesson. Period. He loved to make people feel good and have fun and, you know, just enjoy. That's what he was about. He told me once, the most dangerous person that he could associate with is a liar because it's so easy to lie to a blind person. As a matter of fact, they, they had this line that they repeated several times in the film, scratch a lie, find a thief. By definition, his condition forced him to be around honest people. And it also, it also forced him to be honest. You know, you give what you get in this world. In that respect, I think that Ray made honest recordings of, of honest performances, and I think that's a, a, a real good reflection of how he lived his life. A lot of people couldn't figure him out, you know. Um, and I think that attracted more women to him you know, he was just a very intriguing man, but he was very straightforward as well, you know, and I, I think a lot of women just came to him because they wanted to see who he was as the man. I'm going to tell you what, 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 what made Ray Charles really happy. In, in, in the social time that I spent with him, he loved a good conversation. He loved a good argument. It was almost impossible to win an argument with him. Um, he enjoyed listening to Dodger young, games, Laker games, some football, mostly basketball and baseball, though. Ray was simple. He didn't have a lot of 
he wasn't high maintenance. It didn't take a lot to make Ray happy. I mean, after the show, we'd go back to the hotel room, you know, he'd get an egg sandwich, we'd put on a ball game, and during the commercials, we'd talk and argue about stuff. And that really made him happy. He wanted to be one of the guys. Very, very dedicated. Uh, I've watched Mr. Charles many times come off the plane no in Paris, Europe, wherever, come into the office, drop his coat, come straight to the studio. No there were lie. many mornings that I've come in early, and he has beat me to the office, and he's in here. And, you know, you walk in, and because he had no sight, you know, there were no lights on, so sometimes he was scared. <laughs> and he says, darling, don't be scared. It's you sighted people with the problem, not mine. He made you want to be better. One thing about Ray Charles, he never gave an insincere compliment. He didn't give many compliments. But when he gave you a compliment, you knew that you earned it. And you wanted another one. And he knew that. I remember one distinctive uh, conversation with him, and he said that music was so much a part of his life that, and he enjoyed it so much. I remember so him people. distinctively turning to me and say, when I'm no longer here, you're going to have a lot of music to share with the world. Take I do advice. this for the world. And he says, as you see me constantly recording and all this music we have here, this is my legacy that I'm leaving. And I remember that conversation with him because I didn't understand it. You know, you're not putting out all of this stuff. Why are you doing it? But um, that's what he wanted most from his music was to just give it to the world. Give it to the world. This is Brett Premack, inviting you to join us again for the video podcast series, Ray Charles, Genius. No use crying.